Good evening to everybody. When I joined the department, they asked me why I have joined this department. And uh, it was but of jokes. I can remember R.K. Lakshman's uh, cartoon. One fellow will be drenched in fully in rain and all others will have umbrella. And he will be shouting, how do you know that I am working in the metallurgical department? <laughs> the, when I retired, on the day of my retirement, hordes of people came, they praised my services and all newspapers uh, praised my service rendered by me. But it is not due to me. It is due to technology, thanks to technology. I have no role at all. I simply translated what technology has given me to the public, that's all, nothing beyond that. So, I have just told why I am standing here. And one more thing is, nobody thought that when satellite was launched, that it will be used by metrology. In a vast expanse of sea where we don't have observatory, satellite helps us to locate a cyclonic storm. And uh, if you take a radar, in second world road is used to locate enemy aircrafts, but meteorological community used it for uh, say, uh, tracking the clouds. And then you take the computers. Nobody thought it would be used by meteorological department. Then it started using it. And similarly, communication. In fact, before the advent of internet, meteorological telecommunication network was the biggest telecommunication network in the entire world. But the moment the internet came, it started using internet to exchange the data. So well, there is a lesson in it. Whatever latest is happening in any, any other field, we can take that and use it. So we are students forever. Even after uh, going to the job, we had to be like that. Learn whatever technology is elsewhere, replicate it here. Certainly we can progress. And then regarding cyclone, what exactly is a cyclone you'd like to have, no? This is a cyclone. You will see a mass of cloud. Only in an intense cyclone, you will have a cloud-free zone. Operating that cyclone, you have what is called an eyeball zone. That is precisely the area in which strong winds will be there. If the wind speed increases beyond 63 kilometers per hour, you call it a cyclone and you give names and all. And the entire system as a whole will move around 300 kilometers per hour. It is not a solid object. It is only a disturbance that is moving. It will move to an area, create clouds, give rain. That's all. It is how it is moving. But how it will move? This is a question that will come paramount in your mind. So, uh, actually after all, there are disturbances embedded in the sea. So, it is the winds in the sea which are sharing it. But they will move in a way whichever they like. But how to track it? This is another question that will come. So, we are we use computers. Now, the system of triclone forecasting has improved mainly because of the numerical weather prediction techniques. I was in Bangkok in the year 2013 on 6th May. They wanted to know the state of art facilities in India or what is the facility you are having. I told, I started from Chennai on 4th, today is 6th. On 4th itself I know the cyclone will form in the Bay of Bengal. So after this conference I will go back and I will be tracking the cyclone, I told. There is no indication at all if you see a satellite picture, there will be a cyclone. Still, we could do it. Because what is called the genesis potential parameter. We will know at least 10 days in advance, something is likely to form. It comes with a notice. And then regarding the track and intensity, where it is going to cross, we are all depending on numerical weather prediction. Now, if you take a paper uh, boat, it will go along with the stream. Similarly, there are disturbances embedded in the atmosphere. They will go like that with the air aloft. They will be steering it. Now, if you take this system, which in 1996, it found somewhere in Bay and you see the loops it has made. If it forms a loop like that, how to predict? It becomes a real challenge. Now, we have to depend on numerical techniques and we are not alone in tracking it. Many other countries are doing it. Japanese will do, European Union will do, Americans are doing it, Australians are doing it, like that, all modeled output will come. And then all will be different also. Because the quantum of data that goes inside a system, the physics of the principles that is used in that system, the software, all differs. So even the track will be different. But if there is a common track, 100% will happen. If there is a divergence in track, which computer track I should take? These are all the challenges we are facing. 
In fact, this is a system called Tane, which crossed very close to Kadalur for Puducherry, and we could uh, uh, give an accurate forecast for it. Why? It's only because of the system, computer system. You see, you show a system is going to form in the bay, it will come closer to our coast, and see the color. It shows, uh, it is actually at a height of 1.5 kilometers above the sea level. It says, for more than 50 miles per MPS, it can, meters per second, it can become, uh, the system will be stronger. So we gave a forecast, that when it crosses Kadalur, close to Kadalur, certainly you will get a wind speed of the order of more than 140 kilometers per hour, I told. Now, this is a case of Hudud. When the system formed in the sea, Chandra Babu and I had call, uh, called that we should depute a person, and I went to, and I have stayed with him for two days. And he was uh, tech savvy. He used to ask a lot of questions. And he told how it will go. I told that the path that it will go towards Vishakapatnam. How sure you are? I told different models are showing, see different colors are there. Blue color, uh, magenta color, red color, all colors are there. I told the consensus is that it will cross near Vishakapatnam. And then will it uh, weaken? I told it will not weaken, sir. Because the tree is very warm. You see the first picture, it's a red color. The temperature is order of 30 degrees Celsius. The warm sea is there, it will not weaken at all. And wind shear aloft also is favorable. The system will not weaken, I told. And then, this was the last picture I showed to him. You can see the eye. And we, this is based on all consensus. In this picture, we take all models and again feed into a computer. And computer comes with a, some sort of a consensus. Initially, you can see some purple color indicating 80 percent probability it will go in that direction. And near the coast, we could see get the maximum probability of more than 40 percent up to 60 percent so near Vishakapatnam. So, with certainty, I told it will cross Vishakapatnam. And it happened like that only. First hyperlink. This was a radar picture. See, radar sees like that, whereas satellite will see like that. So, I am showing a radar uh, animation captured in our uh, radar screen. Are you able to get it? Or you can close it and open the file. You go to a uh, Hudud file. Huh? Sorry for the hiccup. <laughs> I can go without that also, but you will appreciate that thing once you see the animation.
So the system is uh, clo going close to Vishakapatnam. You can see tall towers. That is the center part of the system. The cloud height will go even up to 15, 16, 17 kilometers in height. They are called hot towers. And howling sound also you can hear when it was going closer to the coast. Next. Next hyperlink. See, I, every rocket launch I used to go to Sri Kota and I used to brief and on the day of launch I never used to go. And on a particular day, they were going to launch four satellites. That was a giant leap forward. Now they have launching even more than 100, one or four satellites in a single launch. So four satellites was a big event. So on the day, there was a cyclone, Nargis, 550 kilometers east of Chennai. So at the time they called me, we had a meeting in the night. Can we launch or not like that? Madhavan Nair, then chairman of ISRO, posed the question to me. I told, certainly you can launch, sir, I told. How? Because the, most of the models suggest that it will go towards Myanmar in a northeast direction. But even if it fails, if it comes here, no problem, sir. So by the time you launch, uh, because tomorrow at 10 o'clock it won't come near us at all, I told. And as per the model's uh, consensus, it did move towards uh, Myanmar and it became an history. In fact, a lot of people died also in Myanmar. So this is a satellite animation of the same. You can see the system going towards uh, Okay, next. No. It's an unfinished task. See, after I took over uh, as, uh, in the cyclone warning center, for nearly for the past one decade, not even a single fisherman has died. So, they take the warning very seriously. If I said not to venture into the sea, they will not venture at all. And those who are in the deep sea also, we like to warn so that they can come back. The problem is cell phone have a reach of only 20 kilometers. How to reach? Satellite phones are all very costly proposition. And again, hazard, everybody cannot get a sat phone as for the security aspect. So the only best possibility is the navtics. This is a navigation telex it is called. So in fact, this was also not working in our thing because uh, who should broadcast, they were not doing it properly. In our internal fora, I was constantly uh, telling that it should operate and the powers that be in our headquarters talked with the D Director General of Light Ships and light Lighthouses and they started the broadcast and some seven stations are now doing it. So those ships within 75 nautical miles from the coast, they will get this in the form of a print. It is called direct narrowband printing from this equipment. Now, I want the same thing to happen for fishermen also. There is a local language component also in that. Tamil, Telugu, Oriya, Bengali, all languages have come in that. So I have suggested that it should be done for fishermen. All fishermen vessels which go beyond in deep sea, they should carry this equipment, they should get a broadcast and they should do it. I have taken it with Incois. So now this August forum, I feel that you can also do a bit to encourage. Of course the sets are a bit costly. But there are a lot of manufacturers like government supported manufacturers, government organizations that are BEL, Bharat Electronics Limited, some here, that can manufacture cheap shirts and give it to the fishermen so that they carry. Even if a system is brewing, likely to come within three, four days, in advance we can warn so that they can come back to the coast. Even those fishermen in the deep sea will not die at all. So that is my dream. And uh, next thing is standard operating procedures. In fact, when, uh, they, we have made a standard operating procedure, but it is very much general in nature. But I want standard operating procedure for everybody. Suppose even for a coconut farmer, he should have a standard operating procedure. What should he do the moment a cyclone crosses? Because the crown portion will go. In fact, one uh, person who has a like, poultry told, sir, you told that 140 kilometers wind speed will come during Thane. We were not knowing what I should do. Had they put some tarpaulin or something, they could have protected the poultry. I feel even a watchman should, and a building should know what he should do when a cyclone comes. You can put that animation. So this is a TCS building in Chennai. A watchman is there. He is not able to understand the fury of the winds. 
is directing the bus towards the wind. Instead of directing the bus towards the building, it is going against the wind, away from the building, and see what is going to happen. So I feel wiser counsel should prevail and we should have a standard operating procedure for any disaster. If an earthquake comes, what we should do? If a drought comes, what we should do? If there is a heat wave, what we should do? If a cold wave comes, what we should do? And it should be for every organization, every person. Then only, even a thunderstorm, we should know what we should do. Because many people are dying due to thunderstorm because they are not aware of what they should do in case a thunderstorm comes. If everybody is aware of it, there will be in a paper no news that lightning strike people have died, nothing should come. So that should be the ultimate. With this, let me finish my speech. Thank you.